Welcome everyone to Caleb Watches Movies, the channel where I, Caleb, randomly select from one of the many movies that I own and I watch and review them for you, unlike days like today where I take all the movies from one particular franchise and I rank the crap out of them. And today is my last video that I'm releasing with my Halloween spooky October set, which makes me very sad. But in honor of doing so, I thought I would put out a ranking video, which it's been a while since I've done one of these ranking videos, and usually I do a whole bunch at the end of December, so just brush up on how I do this and see if I can make the waves or piss some people off with my ranking of this franchise, this wonderful, horrific franchise. So Many people out there have grown up with other horror franchises like Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, the Halloween franchise. By the time I got around to watching horror films, those franchises had already come and gone. But for me, growing up in high school, this was the horror franchise that I latched onto. I remember when the first Saw film came out, me and my friends would watch that thing over and over and over again because we dug it so much. We loved this concept, we loved this character of Jigsaw who finds people that he wants to better and to put through tests to where they can dig up that instinct, that primal instinct of survival because they either try to commit suicide or they hurt somebody else. He makes people kill themselves. He never actually kills anyone, which is very, very debatable. Yeah, I'm gonna put you in this gigantic machine that's gonna twist all of your limbs and your head around, but because I never pushed the on button, that doesn't make me a murderer. Which is bullshit, John. That's bullshit. But the latest installment to the Saw franchise came out earlier this month, and I thought, why not end the month of October with me ranking this entire franchise? We finally have 10 films. In my opinion, doing a ranking video, you need to have at least 10 entries in order for it to be a ranking video, so so that's what we're doing here. We can finally do it now. So enough of me blabbering. Let's talk about this franchise. And I'm going to start off at the bottom of the list of which one in this franchise is the absolute worst. And that movie that definitely belongs to be at the bottom of this damn list is not even a Saw film. It's from the Book of Saw, which apparently there's a fucking book out there. Did you know that? I didn't know that. And quite frankly, I don't want to read the goddamn book. It's a movie called Spiral. Starring, of all people, Chris Rock, who was just fucking awful in the movie. I just watched the movie Jigsaw and Spiral for the first time just before I hit the record button here, so all this stuff is fresh in my mind. Chris Rock is terrible. I, I just, <laughs> he was trying so goddamn hard to be angry or dramatic or sad. He puffs out his face to make him seem more angry as something. I don't just... <sighs> and his delivery of lines. Stick to comedy. Please stick to comedy. This dramatic thriller stuff, I don't know how you got cast in this thing, but stop and it's not even a jigsaw film there's a guy in here pretending to be jigsaw i'm not going to spoil who turns out to be the antagonist even though it's fucking clear as day like in the first five minutes that you meet the guy but he doesn't even sound like jigsaw he's not even trying to modulate his voice to sound like the terrifying tobin bell he's making himself sound like Jim Gaffigan for some reason. Hey everybody, I want to play a game. And then I'm going to talk about my family and the vacation that we just took. Spiral is absolutely awful and it definitely belongs at the bottom of this list. Next up is a movie that... Even though it was listed as the final chapter, there were still three other entries <laughs> that came out after it. This is Saw 3D, or Saw 7, or Saw the Final Chapter, whatever title you want to settle on. Because the studio couldn't decide either, because the whole 3D phase was happening at this time, so they're like, ooh, it's Saw 3D, and then the 3D looked like shit, so we're like, no, it's Saw the final chapter. Should have just called it Saw 7. Could we just call it Saw 7? Saw 7. Suh, suh. It makes sense. And this movie only exists as a gimmick. That's all it is. What traps can we put these people in that will force things to be thrown at the screen? Because 3D and stuff, everybody. It's 3D. Whoa. I never understood 3D. Like, it's not 3D. It's not 3D at all. It's an illusion, but it's not 3D because the stuff is not actually coming out at me. And if it's not coming out of the 2D dimensional screen, it's not 3 fucking D. God! But in here, all the characters are very forgettable. I've only seen it once before, and 
I, I have completely forgot all of these characters. I know that Carrie Elways comes back. He was there for five minutes, and that was the big hook and the big thing to bring people into the audience so that we could see Dr. Gordon again. And now he's evil, and that makes sense. Yay! The final chapter, not really. At number eight on this list is Saw Six. Now, I do think that the first six films have a great continuity to it, and that's probably the most impressive thing about this entire franchise, is how each film in the franchise feels like it just picks up right after the last one ended. And that's exactly what happens here. Literally seconds after Saw Five ends, this is where the actions and all the events of Saw Six takes place. It just felt rushed, and it felt like they were purposely trying to undo everything that they did in Saw Five. Saw 5 saw Hoffman successfully outwit Strom and then also convince all the other FBI agents that Strom was Jigsaw. And it was like, okay, cool, Hoffman, you're a badass. You're the new Jigsaw. I'm behind that. And then here, almost immediately, it's like, well, no, because we have the other detective. She's back because we needed someone. So we're basically going to undo everything that you thought that you did in Saw 5. So there you go. I just didn't like that because I'm very fond of Saw 5 that we'll talk about here in a couple seconds. But Saw 6 felt like it was trying to undo everything that we were setting up for Hoffman. And it just made Hoffman out to be a giant little bitch. Probably the biggest mistake of this entire franchise, but it does have some good moments to it, and that is Saw 3. I remember seeing this film in the theater and just being creeped out by a lot of it because it just felt like this is going for the gore. This is going for the grossness. This is going for all of the bones popping out of skins. We're trying to be as gross as we fucking possibly can. But then it also makes a very bold choice in killing the main antagonist of this entire franchise. And I remember leaving the theater that day wondering, how are they going to continue this? I mean, Jigsaw is dead, and so is Amanda. Now what's going to happen? And then they made seven other films in this franchise. So, you know, what do I know? There's a possibility. We can keep this thing going, writing and stuff. Even though recently the writers did come out and say, like, yeah, killing Jigsaw in Saw 3 was probably a mistake. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. You could have had John Kramer alive for another you know, two or three films and then kill him due to cancer or due to a game that someone kills him in like this. Killing him off so early in the franchise, you just neuter the whole fucking franchise. I really wanted to put Saw 3 at the bottom of this list just because it does that. It does neuter this entire franchise and takes it on a different trajectory that we could have had. We could have had films like Saw X where we go back and we see John Kramer go try to find cures and things, but no, we don't get that. After Saw 3, we have to build up other people. And all we get of Tobin Bell, who is our main person in this franchise, is just through shitty-ass flashbacks. Saw 3 was a mistake. If there was any other story point here, this film probably would have been higher on the list, but you kill your main antagonist in the third installment of a franchise. Okay, that doesn't make sense. Up next is a movie that I'm surprised that it's as high as it is. I thought this was going to be much lower, but it's a movie that I had to watch for this ranking. I have not seen it before, and that is Jigsaw, or Saw 8, I guess, if you want to be technical about it, even though this film is not about Jigsaw at all. It's about some other people and some fanatics of Jigsaw. It's about corrupted cops, and it's about a mortician who wants justice for things. The only tie we have to Jigsaw is that the events that happen out at the farm have actually happened years in the past when Jigsaw Tobin Bell was alive, and that inspires the events of today. Which, as I'm talking about it more, sounds stupid. It really does, but I actually did enjoy the traps and I enjoyed the situation when we're back on the farm and we're back with John Kramer who is alive and the reasoning why he's chosen all these people. And I actually like the people that he's selected in there. A lot of times with these joint traps that many people are connected to, a lot of them are just annoying, but I actually didn't mind the majority of them. I thought this movie was going to spawn off a whole different franchise of Saw with a different Jigsaw person, but I mean, I don't think this film was well received, so yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> Now moving to the top half of my list, next up is Saw 4 at number 5. Saw 4. 
at number five. This was the first entry that we started getting the backstory of John Kramer and what drove him to becoming the antagonist, the serial killer, even though he's technically never killed anyone. He was going to have a baby with his wife and everything was all happy and sunshine and rainbows until there was a miscarriage because of some drug addict motherfucker. And that's what starts spiraling John Kramer down this dark and dreary path. But it's also a movie I feel like is tying up a lot of loose ends. We still have Detective Matthews in here after he's basically been fucked up in the previous two films. Here he is. We're finally like, okay, let's end the whole Detective Matthews storyline. This guy has suffered enough. Let's put him out of his misery. And we also have the arrival of the brand new Jigsaw in Detective Hoffman, which I like that. That was a fun little twist. And I like Detective Hoffman more as the protege and the next Jigsaw as opposed to Amanda or any of the other copycats that we've gotten in this franchise. I also like that Detective Riggs was chosen for this series of games. Basically, if you have any role or any speaking role in this franchise, you're kind of set for life because eventually you're going to get your own movie and your own story. He has these minor parts in Saw 2 and then Saw 3 and then here he is. He's the main person that we're following here in Saw 4. Saw 4 I actually enjoy a lot with the flashbacks even though the cinematography behind the flashbacks is pretty crappy and pretty low budget in my opinion. I do like here we started to see the backstory of John Kramer and where he comes from. That's what we wanted. That's where this franchise should have given us with actual scenes with Tobin Bell as John Kramer. But damn it, Saw 3 happened and ruined it. <laughs> At number four is an entry into this franchise that I don't think a lot of people enjoyed, but after I watched it, I really dug this thing. And I dug the overall trap with all of the people going from room to room, killing each other, even though they didn't really have to kill each other. This is Saw 5. This is the one where Detective Hoffman makes you believe that, yes, he is the next Jigsaw. He is badass, he's clever, he's cunning, and he knows what the fuck he's doing. The complete and total ponage of Detective Strong <laughs> at the end when he, when the walls are coming in you just you're fucked dude and you got outplayed like you're screwed sorry sorry that you had to be the one and sorry that you had to go through the torture of stabbing yourself in the beginning of the film with a little pen so that you could breathe in that impossible water trap but here you are again and sadly this has to happen you got pwned bitch but we also get the backstory of Detective Hoffman and why he became an associate of John Kramer of Jigsaw and the pain and the anguish that he had to go through in his life. I like it. I like finding out the origins of these terrible people. It makes them relatable and it makes them better villains once you find out the reasoning and the whys as to what they're doing. Plus, again, the overall connective trap, and I thought it was very clever to where you get to the end and you could have saved all five of yourselves, but because this is Jigsaw, because this is Saw, everyone thinks like, oh, well, someone has to die. But here it is. Nope, you could have saved everybody. There was plenty of room in the little tunnels. You didn't need to throw someone into the tub and connect all of the things to them. You could all absorb a little tiny shock yourselves. Basically, you did it to yourselves. Right? This is all on you. This is all your fault. Now both of you have to basically cut off your own arm. I like it. I like the message of you reap what you sow. And you're all shitty people, so of course you did shitty things. I really enjoy this one. At number three is the first sequel of this franchise. This is where me and my friends started watching the original just over and over and over again because we were so hyped for Saw 2. Back when Jigsaw was alive and he was coherent and he could have conversations. And that's the aspect of this film that I love the most is the conversation that John Kramer was trying to have with Detective Matthews about his mindset and why he is doing what he is doing. Because in the first one, we only got a little glimpse of who this person is. Here we are actually finding out the first inclinations as to who this character of Jigsaw is and why he does what he does. And then the whole haunted house bit where they're all breathing in poison air and they're trying to find the antidotes all throughout the house. I think those traps are great. And how it all connects to it's in the same setting as the original Saw was like a 
big mind-blowing thing. Then Amanda turning out to be the informant and being the first protege that we are aware of, the person who's been helping John Kramer out, which made a lot more sense to me. I was watching the first one over and over again and then watching some scenes in Saw 2 and I was like, how is John Kramer doing this? He's barely able to walk. Of course he has an informant. Of course he has someone on the inside and that is Amanda. And here is actually like, okay, I like Amanda here. In Saw 3, you don't like Amanda because she turns and it's like, what's, what's your problem. But Saw 2 I thought was a great sequel and a nice escalation to what we got in the original. I just wish the entire franchise would have followed suit with where they were going in this one as opposed to Saw 3 changing everything and then we got what we got basically. At number two has to go to the original entry of this entire franchise, the film that really put James Wan on the map, who directed this thing. That's right, the guy behind the Conjuring films, the Aquaman films, he started here with Saw, people. And that's the original Saw film from 2004. Harry Elways is a great get for this movie. He's the one who actually cuts off his leg. He's Dr. Gordon. He's the voice of reason. He's really the person that we're following the majority of the time with this movie. We have Danny Glover in here as a detective trying to hunt down Jigsaw, or whoever this Jigsaw killer is. This is when the franchise was in its infancy, and we had no idea what was going on. We had no idea what would happen. And it was such a great original idea of this killer putting people in situations to where either they would live or they would kill themselves. You'd never seen that before. All you got before was people like Mike Myers and Jason and Freddy Krueger, people who would go out and actually kill people. Jigsaw? No, he doesn't technically kill people. He just puts people in killing situations. Carrie Elways, I think, is great in here. He's such he's such a weird dude in real life. I met him one year at Comic-Con and asked him to sign one of my books, and uh, he was just very weird. He was very private. He's definitely an introvert. You can definitely get that. He's just very, very weird. Very weird dude. But this film is the movie. It is the events that all the other films in this franchise reference back to. In every single one, there is a reference to a trap from this film, or a setting in this film, or a person in this film. Everything comes back to the original Saw movie. Making the movie out to be, I think, something greater than what it is. <laughs> it's a great movie, but all these other movies are basically paying homage to this original entry of this franchise. I'm like, I don't think it, that's entirely deserved, but... Yes, of course, all the things in this movie are awesome, and it's set up this awesome franchise and this awesome character that hasn't been topped up until this year. And that's why, number one, if you went back and watched my review for it earlier this month, you heard me say that the best entry in this franchise by far is the latest entry, Saw 10, Saw X. This movie is a prequel. It goes back to when Tobin Bell's John Kramer was actually alive. He was able to stand up, he was able to walk around, and he's able to try to fight for his life. He is trying to find experimental treatments that can treat his cancer, ends up finding one, goes to the place, thinks he is on the mend, but turns out it, the whole fucking thing is a scam. And you almost feel bad for the scammers because they don't know that what they're doing is that they are fucking with one of the most vicious serial killers in the entire world, and that is Jigsaw. But everything makes sense here. The traps make sense. The settings make sense. This is unlike other entries in this Saw franchise where we're trying to figure out, oh, what's the creepiest trap we can do, or what's a trap where we can see the most blood and the most bones breaking, because that's gonna be creepy. That's what people want. What the people want is a good story. And that's what this movie is. This is not a horror film. This is not a suspense thriller. This is a drama. This is about a man's fight to stay alive and finding that hope to stay alive and finding that purpose in fighting for his life. And these people, these scammers, screwed him out of it. This movie is about hope and it's about vengeance because you fucked with my hope. Now... I'm gonna make you fight for your own life. The traps in here, I think, are great. Yes, they're gruesome, but again, it's not gruesome for gruesome's sake. They actually have purpose. And I just felt so good for Tobin Bell because, again, he was killed off in Saw 3, and he didn't have any time or any chance to really dive into this character. Here, he finally gets that chance. 20 years after the first entry of this franchise, Tobin Bell 
finally actually gets to dive into this character and be this character for the majority of time on screen. I almost feel like this film should have been called Jigsaw because this film is actually finally about Jigsaw and who the person of Jigsaw is. Saw 10, Saw X, whatever you want to call it, is by far the best entry. All the other entries at best are here. Saw 10 is up here for me. And that is my ranking of all of the films that have come out in this Saw franchise. What did you think of my ranking? What is your personal ranking of all of these films in the Saw franchise? Please comment below and let me know what you thought. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I release my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.